What's going on guys? Mark from Worlds of Emulation here. You guys want to play Bloodborne Max settings on your PC? Here's how to do it. You will go to this GitHub website and download with the latest links. By the way, all the websites I'm going to be showing you are going to be in the description. Some of the builds won't have the download link, so just go to the one below that. These are the most updated builds from the community working on the emulator. Results may vary build to build. You also have to log in or create an account in order to download and selects what OS you are using using the QT build. If you want to find the Bloodboard game, you will have to either dump it from a hacked PS4, or you can just look up Bloodborne PKG on Google, and you'll just find results there. Now let's talk about mods, probably the most important section of the video. There are three types of mods I'll categorize. The first category are mods that are required to have the closest experience to the original, the second category are mods that enhance the experience that include better visuals, gameplay features, UI, etc. Third are mods that will help the user in any way they can to have a performance boost. Some of these mods may be outdated and have no uses in the future, so if you don't see some of the mods that I'm showing in the description, then that means you don't have to worry about it. Also, you gotta have an account for Nexus mods to download. Let's start with the first category. Download the Emu Rainbow and Blackness, the Vertex Explosion, and SFX Fixes. Including this file, unless you will be using the Bloodboard Enhanced mod that has exclusive gameplay features, which you are going to use this file. And at this point, for the second category, I like to have this Bloodboard Enhanced mod to have gameplay features such as boss rematches, having any gear at the start of the game, warping lamp to lamp, etc. Reshade mod, so we can adjust our visuals to make it more atmospheric. I just like the subtle one. You will also need to go to this website to download Reshade itself. If you have a very strong PC, and I mean really strong, I tried this mod because it overhauls the visuals and makes it look nicer. And the Xbox UI mod just for the heck of it. For the last category, it's for performance enhancements for low-end users. Use the FPS boost in the same Reshade mod section. If you want to have a 60 FPS experience, this mod can help a lot, but it won't be perfect. The fidelity and visuals can be very off-putting. A lot of shadows and effects are just removed. It's possible that the emulator is optimized for you to not to use it, but just in case. And if you really want to improve your performance even more, you can also download this FPS boost from FromSoftServe. Let's set up our emulator really quick. Extract the emulator to a dedicated folder. Make a games folder in the emulator. Fortunately for me, I already have some games, so I'm just gonna drag my games onto here. And then boot it up. You will want to assign a folder directory that contains all of your PS4 games. Do so here with the games folder you created, then hit OK. Let's hit settings first. Not much to go off of as of this recording, but if you want the newest builds daily, you can use the nightly builds and hit check for updates. If there's an update, it'll ask if you want to update. I'll just do so right here. I'm also just going to check mark these options. And if you would like to have an updates folder separated from the game here, just in case you need to revert any changes, you can do that right here. But I wouldn't really recommend doing this option. There isn't a dedicated input settings to customize your controller, so skip that for now. Select your graphics device to your dedicated GPU and V blank divider to 4. Path section will allow you to change your directory, and then you're all set with that section. Now let's install our PKG Bloodborne file. On the top left of the emulator, install PKG and select the game itself. And do the same thing for the updates and DLCs. This will really depend on how you obtain this file or this folder. Again, you can just look up the game's title and put the letters PKG after on Google. Sometimes it'll also come with an update and DLC, and even have a 60 FPS patch included in the updates. If you don't have this, it's okay. The emulator will have those patches. You'll see in a moment. After you install all the files, right click on the game and go to cheats slash patches and download the cheats for each repository. This may update over time months from now, like finding third party cheats, but the most important section here are the patches. This is where you can adjust the game's resolution, frame rate, features, and some miscellaneous patches. After dialing all the patches, 
you will have to click on the Shad PS4 patch to open up different kinds of patches for each file. So there's Golden Hands patches and the Emulators patches. I will start selecting my preference, skipping Intro, disable Chromatic Grabberation, if that takes it, and disabling Motion Blur, adding a 60 FPS patch, forcing Enable Old Hunter DLC, and if you want to really boost your frame rate, just do the 720p resolution patch. Now for the mods. This is probably the most complicated section, as in what mods you should use. Uh, you can go back and get additional mods or remove some, but know as of this recording, there's not really an option to turn mods on or off. So you'll need to create a Bloodborne backup like this. Copy the folders that are shown on screen from the install Bloodborne PKG files from the game's directory onto here. So when you need to revert any changes, you can delete the folders from the modded PKG and paste the original onto there and redo the process. So not only do you need to back up the files, I would also keep the zipped modded files if you want to keep some mod files so that you don't have to go back to Nexus mods. I know, it's super inconvenient. With all that said, find all of your mods that you installed. In this case, I placed most of my mods onto the mods recommendation folder. Then open a new window on the right and go to the db2 roots folder in the Bloodborne folder. To apply the mods, extract each zip and place them here. Be sure that you are placing them correctly. For this tutorial, I'm going to try to apply the best experience mods, so not using any frame boost, but if you are one of those people, you can use both of these mods to help you achieve 60 FPS, especially from soft service boost. For the sound mod, this is important to know, when you quit this game, be sure to first go back to the main menu and then shut off the emulator. Do not shut off the emulator while your save file is still running, because when you go back to the game, the sound will not work because of the prompt that says you didn't properly save your game. So in other words, when you're done playing the game, go back to the main menu and then shut off the emulator. For Bloodborne Enhanced, it's going to be quite a process to work with, so you can skip this section using the timestamp below if you're not using this mod. After extracting this mod, you will want to select this exe file and run it. It might have a pop-up window, and ask you to download the newest Windows Desktop Runtime, or .NET, and it'll download using whatever browser you are using, and follow the steps there. It's very fast and easy. Then run the exe file again. When opening up the patcher exe, you want to set your game's path to the Bloodborne package, specifically the DVD roots folder. And then hit proceed. This will start compiling your current mods and the Bloodborne Enhanced mod together so it can work properly. After it is done compiling the package, you can head over to the settings GUI to customize your mod. Enable or disable features that you'll want to enhance the experience. A lot of this can be set up to default if you want. Some of the preference where every time you go to a lamp, your vials and bullets will auto regenerate so you don't have to farm. You can also set your new game cycle when you start the game. You can also have a free stock shop where you can have all the gear and outfits when you play the game. Click save, then close this window. Click on the game's files and drag the DVD roots onto the Bloodborne package. Now for reshade. When extracted, drag the folder onto the PS4 emulator directory then boot up the reshade setup. Select Browse and find the Shad PS4 EXE. Hit Next and use the Vulkan API. Then hit Next and select Browse again. Then find the file BB Subtle Presets in that reshade folder. When that's finished, you can close that reshade and boot up the emulator once more. you can finally start booting up the Bloodborne game itself. When booting up Bloodborne, press the home key on your keyboard and you can skip the tutorial. Now, Reshade requires you to allow latency in order to add post-processing to the game. It also decreases your performance. So if you're willing to deal with input latency and you have a very strong computer, you can keep it how it is. 
but for those who don't want to experience too much latency and want to have a good performance, the same with these two options will help. As well, turn on performance mode on the bottom and go into the settings tab and check mark load only enabled effects. Then hit the home key again to back out. You are all now set to play Bloodborne. Please understand that this emulator is still very early work in progress emulator, so you will experience freezing, lots of visual bugs, etc. But this tutorial will still help achieve the best experience right now at 60 FPS on your PC. I'm sure I'm going to have to make another updated tutorial on this in the future. So look forward to that if you are still hesitant on jumping onto the PS4 emulator. Also, if you want to see how it runs and looks with the performance boost on, I'm going to show some footage right here in comparison. For now, please give a like to this video. It helps the algorithm a ton for me. I would really appreciate it. And subscribe for more Bloodborne progress, tutorials, and emulation coverage. See you guys in the next video.